So when you're writing equations, it's going to take on um, this basic form right here. All cost equals the total. Now, today we, we are dealing just with cost, so there's a lot of money type situations. You have to know the difference between um, what a cost would be. Usually there's only two, two different costs in the problems we're writing, but they'll usually declare some kind of total. Maybe that's all the money you have or something like that. All of those would be totals. So we're looking for this type of setup. Uh, but it says, yeah, the basic form will be based on the information that is given. Now, this information given, sometimes it's not always obvious when you first read the problem, which means that you may have to read and reread the problem several times, actually. In fact, as we're doing it today, it's possible we may need to uh, even do that at the end of the problem. So just, just be aware. This is a lot of reading, and you may have to read and reread this the same problem several times before you really understand what it is asking, how to use the values as well. Now it says the variable should represent the objective. It should tell you what the variable is. So in the past we've been using a lot of X's, but today they may say, well, use P or T or S or A or something like that as the variable. So if they tell us to do that, we're gonna have to use those because on the assignment, if you don't use those letters, the assignment's gonna mark those incorrect even though you may have the correct equation. And then finally, since we're doing this by hand today on the classwork, we'll make sure to label our answers. Uh, we, we should always label our answers for work problems. But um, do keep in mind that on the assignment, it usually does label those for you. Now, the last thing I'll, I'll say about these is when you, are, when you are writing them, sometimes you may write it incorrectly. You're going to solve the problem and type your answer into the, uh, into the box. It, it's, the pro it's the answer that you got but because you have set it up incorrectly, the answer is, uh, is incorrect. So we have to be careful with the way that we set these up. Usually it's just a, mis a misplacement of the variable. So we have, we'll have to keep that in mind. So what is the solution? Yeah, we're, we'll be checking these, all right? And I'm just gonna use the calculator to check them just like we did on the bell work. I'm not gonna actually write that work out, but I just wanna make sure that it will make the equation that we have written a true statement. Uh, and, and if it doesn't, then, well, Clearly, I will have made a mistake somewhere in there, which is common. Usually, if I make a mistake, it's just a simple addition or subtraction, small, something small. Maybe I forget to carry over. Maybe I um, copy it down wrong. Okay, more, or maybe I just type it into the calculator wrong when I check it. So you have to be careful. It's okay to make those mistakes, but you have to find out where you make them. And then, yeah, principles of equality, which hopefully we feel pretty used to by now. Uh, the addition and subtraction principles of equality. So principles of equality, again, whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other side, whether it's any one of these four operations. But we're going to be doing these with purpose. If we use addition or subtraction, we are going to force values to become zeros. And again, the reason why we're going to be making these become zeros is because if they are zeros, then we get to ignore them. Uh, just like we saw in the bell word. And then if we use multiplication or division this means we're going, going to be forcing values to become ones and again just like we saw on the bell work it usually means that we're going to make the coefficient to one okay so if the coefficient is anything other than one we'll have to use either multiplication or division to force it to become a one so again, when we, when we look at these, because we could do anything to both sides that we want to, but we want to use these principles of equality to force zeros and one. So here's our first problem. Under your cell phone plan, you pay a flat cost of $44.50 per month and then $5 per gigabyte. You want to keep your bill at $61 per month. Write the equation that could be used to determine X, the number of gigabytes of data you can use while staying within this budget. So we just read through the problem, and uh, for some of us that's difficult, but... Um, we need to be able to read through the problem. Just read it through it once. Now we can go back, like I said, read and reread these. I'm going to go back and just see if I can find some information that will be useful for us. And I'll keep in mind that I'm looking to make um, the costs equal to the total. Okay, so, so what are some costs that we have? Well, reading through this, you, can, you have a flat cost right here. It's $44.50 per month. And yeah, that right there is a cost.
Okay, so it just calls that some kind of flat cost. So I'll, I'll label it as a flat cost. So you have this flat cost. And in addition to that, we can see in this problem, you're also paying $5 per gigabyte. So that would be a cost, the gigabytes. And I may have spelt that incorrect, but I also don't care. Uh, and then, and then of course, we have the total also, which was given. Uh, that would be our total bill. So, looks like that's just sixty-one dollars per month. That would be our total. Okay. So again, we do have the cost. We have the flat cost plus the gigabytes should equal the total. Do we have those values? Yeah. Well, we got the flat cost definitely at forty-four dollars fifty cents. They gave us the total directly as $61 per month. So all of my costs added together should be that 61 bucks. So I have this set up, but, I, but the gigabytes right here is where we find uh, that students have a lot of confusion. And here's why. It's because it's $5 per gigabyte. That right there is a rate. And so we have to pay attention to the other part of the problem that says X is the number of gigabytes. So it's possible that's per one gigabyte, $5 per one gigabyte. It's possible you could use more than one gigabyte. So to figure out the total cost of all the gigabytes, you're gonna take the $5 and multiply it by however many gigabytes there are. This would be the total cost of all of the gigabytes. So I'm just, I'm just dropping this down because on the, on the assignment, this would be one box that you gotta fill in, okay? But I want, I want to be able to leave that there clean but the next part right here, I'm, I've, I've just copied it down so that I can start working with it so that we can actually solve this. And X represents the number of gigabytes of data that can be used. So we go to our principles of equality. And uh, the first thing I see here is that I would want to zero out the 44.50 by subtracting 44.50. Just if I do it to one side, I need to make sure to do it the other side. So that will, in fact, zero that out. I can now drop my five X is there, which equals, so I'm going to the calculator, 61 minus 44.50, enter, I got 16.5. Now this, these word problems like this can be interpreted even at this point. This means that just after you've paid for the flat cost, if you have the 61 bucks, you still have $16.50 to spend on gigabytes of data. So let's figure that out. Um, we'll drop the X or the equal sign. But what I would really like here is not five X's, but one X. Okay, this will tell us how many gigabytes can be used. But to do that, I've got to change that five coefficient to a one by dividing not just the left side by five, but the right side by five as, we, as well. So I got 16.5 divided by five is 3.3. And yeah, we can specify that, right? We can say, well, that's um, gigabytes of data. If I, was do, if, I was, if I was writing this by hand, I would have just written gigabytes. Now we can check. We can say, well, look, look you get your 3.3 .3 gigabytes of data. This should be correct, but I just go to my calculator, I type in 44.5 plus five times, not X, but 3.3 .3 now. And when I push enter, I see the 61. And now I know for sure that I've done this correct. So again, on, on the assignment, you'll expect two parts to this. You're going to have the, the equation first, and then you're going to have the value of x, or whatever the variable is. Now, one last thing I'll, I'll mention here also is that uh, you could write the equation. If you want to write the equation just in a different order, you could. You could have said 5x plus 4450 equals 61, and you should still get full credit. It's the same exact equation. It's just change the order that they're written. The other thing you have to keep in mind on here is that most of these equations are not really necessary. Uh, so most adults, when they encounter a problem like this, which there are many, it's not likely that they would actually write an equation to solve it, and, and that includes math teachers. So um, usually you would just solve this, you would probably think about this and solve it with some logic, and then you'd be done. But here they're going to ask for equations. 